Guys, welcome back. Today we have on the show Epoch Rising and he is basically, you know, he has achieved financial freedom. He's posting all this awesome content on just like the best, most mythical stuff and everything else like that. And he's really, his journey is so interesting because he goes from that to getting extremely jacked and working on his body and that being one of his like main priorities as well as a lot of esoteric wisdom and other things. So we get deep into it, this podcast, and it is absolutely fantastic. There's some lessons in here, especially talking about fractal patterns and how they work within your mind, which you really want to learn about. It is absolutely insane. I absolutely loved having Epoch on the show today. It was like, it was great. So if you're interested in any of my coaching or you want to understand anything that I've got available, head to my Instagram, Corey Boutwell, or just check some of the links in any of the descriptions below. And if you like this podcast and you get any value out of it, please just chuck us a like, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And then if you get any value out of this, some extra value, do a cheeky little share on your story, try to grow the podcast as best as possible. So without any further ado, guys, I bring you Epoch Rising. Hope you like this podcast as much as me. This was absolutely insane. And we'll see you in the next one. Epoch Rising, brother. Thank you so much for coming onto the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, all good. So, man, what are you most passionate about at the moment in terms of like the things that you're working on? Yeah, well, I mean, the journey of self-development is the, the main one. I think that's like always going to be the main pillar and cornerstone. Um, but within that, you know, physical fitness, wealth, spirituality, and, you know, all the things that sort of come, come into that. Yeah. Cool. And you've been like, sort of on this, on the scene recently, you sort of just started like exploding with everything, um, which is like <laughs> sick. Like, and I love your content and all the stuff that you do like on your Instagram and stuff is like awesome and it's motivating. And I like talking about it with all my friends all the time because we're sending each other yeah, I love, I love <laughs> all, that. All, all the stuff. What sort of um, got you into that? Yeah, so um, I guess when I was in high school, I went through like a pretty deep stage of... Um, you know, anxiety, like sort of teenage shit that happens, you know, like anxiety, like semi-depression and just a bunch of stuff that went around with that. Um, I wasn't like a very physical kid. I used to play a lot of video games. Like I was always like, I was like one of the popular kids, but I, I never like play. I didn't really like sport. I still don't really like sport to be honest. But um, yeah, I just went through this stage of just because, like just having a lot of anxious thought patterns and noticing that. And then I started really, that's when I first started to understand my mind because I would notice that I'd have a lot of anxious thought patterns that would just keep repeating themselves. And I'd like sit in my room and just like try to grapple what my mind was doing and try to figure out how my thought patterns would always be going down the same pathways. And so from there, that really got me into thinking about like your psyche and how if you don't learn how to control your psyche it's just going to become like this virus in your brain that just runs loose and you can't really control and it just affects your life really drastically mm, so how did you get control over your psyche what were the things that for you when you're like okay i need to like learn about this and dive into it what are some of the things yeah. that you you so, did and still do yeah so it's pretty interesting because there's a lot of like steps that happen in my life that led me to where i am at that i've sort of put perspective on and learned so like HSC universe, like, you know, the high school English, right? So I was doing a high school English essay on a Citizen Kane movie. Um, and in that, my thesis was about perception because that movie isn't linear. So I don't know if you've seen it, but it's not linear. And it tries to portray this story of this guy's like downfall through different timelines in his life. And, and it's like, not, it's not linear. So my whole thing was about perception. And prior to this, I'd never even considered perception. And as you know, and a lot of people here know, like your perception is your reality. But I don't think, I think a lot of people haven't even come to that understanding really. And so doing this really was the, like the key to me realizing how powerful the mind is. And then coupling that with my current situation, I realized that I need to sort of pay attention to my perception and sort of really pay attention to the thoughts that I'm having in order for me to like live a life and break out of whatever struggles and stuff that I was dealing with. So, oh, sorry, let me just delete my notifications and stuff. Um, so I basically went down that rabbit hole of perception. I started getting into philosophy, um, diving into a lot of different philosophies, sort of more abstract 
stuff rather than stoicism at the time. And then from there, um, everything sort of accumulated. I don't know how deep we want to go, but I got into like a lot of conspiracies. <laughs> um, and so while I was going through that phase, I basically was about to enter university. And then I started getting into trying to actually understand the world, how it is. And then through all those conspiracies, I found spirituality, which I thought was a much deeper way to experience reality. And also I thought it was a lot more deeper than typical philosophy that I was studying at the time. Um, and then so through, through all that, that basically helped me like go through my dark night phase and then sort of branch out and like, you know, quote unquote, like awaken to the power of my consciousness and put me on the path that I'm on currently. Mm, interesting. So what does like spirituality look like for you when you're actually like either learning about it or practicing it? Yeah. So I think the fundamental thing is um, like a fundamental understanding of it is that everything's fractal in its nature. So everything starts from like one point and then it fractals out. You can see it all throughout nature, like the hermetic principles um, as above, so below. So the same way a tree starts at one point and then branches out, branches out, branches out. Um, the same way everything does that. It also happens also in the mind. So whatever source thought that you have will then branch out and branch out and start fractaling. So whatever thoughts that you have starting from like a child. And so, for example, if you have anxious thoughts, like as soon as you have an anxious thought, that's going to start fractaling and looping on itself and becoming a part of your personality if you don't control that. So that's, um, I think, one of the most practical, practical ways of looking at it is realizing that everything's fractal. And um, if you understand that, you can sort of pivot yourself and use that as a sort of natural law to put yourself on a path that you want to be and get yourself to where you want to go. Yeah. Which is like insane. So what do you do to get clear on that? Do you just like write things down, like to understand your own thoughts? So like, how, how do you get aware? Yeah. So, I mean, when I first started getting into spirituality, I, I went vegan. So I was like vegetarian for two years and vegan for one. Um, and I feel like a lot of people that go down the spiritual, I'm not vegan anymore, but we can get into diet and stuff later. But um yeah, a lot of people, I think when they get into spirituality, they become vegan. They like, I was fasting a lot. I was just like fasting, meditating, watching a lot of, you know, spiritual lectures by different people like Manly P. Hoare, Terrence McKenna, Alan Watts, uh, Carl Jung. Um, and then a lot of other sort of esoteric woo-woo stuff as well. Um, but yeah, just sort of really just contemplating the mind and then sort of diving into a lot of also ancient texts and a lot of ancient knowledge from, you know, Buddhists, the Egyptians, um, Tibet, like all that sort of stuff as well. And just really trying to understand reality as I see it through my perspective and how I'm interacting and how, you know, my consciousness arises from wherever it arises and sort of just understanding all that like as much as I can around that sort of stuff do you remember any sort of moments you know when you're like on on the journey of when you're like really learning and consuming everything do you, do you remember any moments when you were like learning you're looking at the Egyptian stuff Rudy's and Carl Jung Alan Watts or any of the great teachers and you're you're learning some of the stuff and you have those moments to yourself where you're like oh my god and sort of have like a you know, like a mind blown moment. Do you remember any of those? Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, psychedelics played a big role in it. Yep. <laughs> um, so I had been consuming all this content and all this knowledge. And then when I, I took, um, I took some acid. So when I took the acid, that's when basically everything accumulated and my brain already works pretty fast. And then when I did that, it was like, my brain went into like hyper, drive and it was like zooming out and connecting all the dots into like this mosaic fashion and that's when I really came to fully like in a stand all of the learnings and understood why all these ancient people thought about things that the, the way they did and um 
through that, I could literally see my thought patterns like fractaling. I could understand how breath is like the creator of life and the way you breathe affects your whole like parasympathetic, parasynthetic and your whole nervous system. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was the biggest key. I think psychedelics are pretty powerful when used as, um, as a tool and like a powerful resource rather than just like partying and stuff. Yeah. So that, that was pretty key when I, when I first did that, that really opened my mind and allowed me to see how powerful the brain can be and how, how different your brain and your consciousness can actually be compared to just regular day-to-day -day life, which shows that there's so much more to your consciousness that most people aren't even aware of. Oh, bro. How'd that make you feel, man? Insane. I mean, I don't know if you've <laughs> done like a psych psychedelics or anything, yeah, but like, yeah. yeah, you, you like melt into the divine as I call it. And you can feel so much more. It's like every single thing is enhanced and exacerbated. Like every single thing, your thoughts, your emotions, even like the physical sensations that you've never even felt before are all enhanced. Yeah, it's just insane. So what motivates you to like create all like the great content that you do? Yeah, so typically, so I've been down this path for like maybe five years now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of journals where I'll just write thoughts. I'll just write insights. I'll take notes on just random like three hour esoteric lectures that I just watch. And so I just had all that information to myself. Um, and I came through and it was also like, I had friends at the time and I have friends that I would find this information that I found so valuable and so powerful that when I would, I would want to like share it to them, but they wouldn't even watch it. So this, these videos or these like notes that I took was so powerful that they like changed my life. And so I offered the, to share it to people and people wouldn't even consider watching it. So then when that happened, I was like, well, maybe these people don't even deserve, like if, if this is the most powerful information I have and other people aren't even considering it, then maybe these people don't even deserve that information. So that's the first route I came down. And that's the route that um, a lot of like secret societies like Pythagoras, all these really ancient like historical figures like Pythagoras didn't even let his students take books into the lectures because he didn't want the masses to know. So there's a big, and that also led me to think that there's more hidden knowledge out there because if all these high level figures like for, for Pythagoras, all we know from him is the triangle, but he had like the most crazy knowledge that he taught, but we don't know any of it anymore because it was never told to the masses. Which sucks. So, <laughs> yeah. And that's a common theme, right? Like for some reason, like all these elites back in the day didn't want, they don't want the masses to know anything. So that was my initial route. I was like, well, I'm just going to use all this information to make myself more powerful. And, you know, the masses won't get it and stuff. But then I realized that that first came about because I realized no one in my immediate area wanted the information. So that's where that thought process formed. But then after seeing that there was people that Instagram could be an outlet and there's other people like me and like us that are that going down this path. And that's when I realized that I'll just start creating this content. And I got myself to a point through all of my journey that I'm like successful and I know what I'm talking about. And I have, I feel like I have a lot of value to show to people. So that's when I figured that, you know, there's a lot of lost people out there on this path and it can be pretty lonely especially when you're diving down like this sort of deep esoteric stuff and the way the world is currently with like, you know, everything that's happening. So I thought I would, you know, make this page, start sharing my content to, you know, inspire, motivate people, give them some insights and knowledge on their path. Um, and since then, yeah, pretty much blew Like my account, like blew up really fast. Mm. So what do you think is like a common theme around like your content that really engages with people? Like if you were to speak of a lesson or some sort of teaching or something that you have learned and um, you knew like, oh, I just want maximum engage engagement on this just to see, you know, what people are doing and saying, I would speak about this because everyone always gets really interested when I talk about this lesson or this teaching or something. Yeah, honestly, I never, so I made a post early where I said that this is literally just going to be my, 
I'm not po- like, so it was a thing where like, I'm not posting it for anyone. I'm posting it just because it's my knowledge and I'm putting it out there. Yeah. So I've never posted anything because I thought someone, I, I thought it would get high engagement or I thought someone would like it. So I've only just posted stuff that I wanted to post and insights that I wanted to post and whether people from my audience even understand what I'm talking about or not, yeah. it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. And I think that's why it's created this following because it's just like really raw, like because my account's anonymous, I just talk about anything I want, however I want, Mm -hmm. direct to people. I'll just type my thoughts out. I'll just type stuff out. And I feel like that creates a very, like a really authentic, raw source of information for these people to, to realize that like, I'm just literally putting whatever I want out there. And then if they like it, they can consume it. If they get value from it, they get value from it. Yeah. So I think that's what's really powerful about my page. Yeah. I might have asked a question wrong. So I was just trying to think of like something among like the lessons and the stuff that you teach that um, either gets really good feedback or even oh, that yeah. you're really passionate about. If there's like some sort of topic or subject or something that whenever you talk yeah, about sure. it or a lesson, people are like, yes, I love hearing about that. That's the best. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Sorry, my bad for interpreting. No, all wrong. good. Yeah. So okay. I think like the concept of my page is like breaking out of the matrix and realizing that So that's like the fundamental theme. So breaking out of the matrix through knowledge, through awareness um, and through realizing what's happening in the world. And so I think a lot of people, especially in our audiences, they're like, you know, young to middle-aged men, basically that realize that society and culture and like most men, whether they realize it or not, they realize that there's fundamentally something going like wrong And a lot of men deal with like mental illness, anxiety, and like feel lost. So being able to provide them sort of insights that they can use to have gain a better perspective or a more motivated perspective or a more um, realistic perspective of what's going on and how they can, you know, level up their life. I think that's what really makes people excited about my page. Yeah, I love that. So for you personally, what do you think is like, it could be recently, it could be old, sort of like a, either a mental tool or like an insight or reflection or something that um, you have learnt that you think's just been like awesome, especially to like keep uh, in your mind or the back of your mind. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is that no one's coming to save you. Like, no matter what you're going through right now, no one cares about you as much as you do to get yourself out of the position you're in. And that's the most powerful thing. Like we could dive, I could dive into all this deep, um, you know, abstract thoughts and processes that you can go through. But the fundamental thing is that, and it will across all the board is that no one's coming to save you. So if you're in a situation that you don't like, or you're in a job that you don't like, or you think, you're having these thought patterns that you don't like, or you you don't have money in the bank, or you don't like whatever. No one is going to come and save you. And the only person that can save you is you. The only person that cares about you enough to put you in a position that you like is you. That is like the most powerful thing. And realizing that from a young age put me on this path because like realistically, you're the only one that can help yourself. You're the only one that can do the actions. You're the only one that can think the thoughts. You're the only one that can do anything to help yourself level up and to help yourself get to a situation where you want to be like, no one's going to help you go to the gym. No one's going to make you eat right. No one's going to make you think right. No one's gonna make you read books. That all comes down to you. And one of the most powerful quotes I heard from Jim Rohn was for things to change, you must change. So a lot of people, and I was like this and a lot of people, you know, they just sort of wallow in self-pity and have sympathy for themselves and have that victim mindset. And then that just becomes a part of their identity. But if you actually want to change, you have to change. And I took a pretty like spiritual abstract view on that. And I thought, well, if the version of you is where it is now, if you changed who you are, fundamentally, you could, you could like, I'm big into like timelines and stuff. So if you, became the person of you that is jacked, wealthy, successful, happy. If you fundamentally change who you are on like every level, you will become that person that you want to become like without a doubt. Like it's pretty inevitable. If you do all the actions that that version of you does, 
that you you will become that version of yourself? Oh, yeah, here's a big question. So what does that look like for you? What does that look like for me? Yeah. Oh, I got the dogs barking upstairs. Um, it's okay. The, like the best version of myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be like, I want to go to the gym. So hyper athletic, hyper aesthetic, um, hyper like wealthy and happy and experience all the love, abundance and joy in life that I can. So that's fundamentally where I want to get. Awesome. And what are you doing to like get there at the moment? Yeah. So, um, so I've had a pretty crazy body transformation. I don't know if you've seen that, no, but, um, but I'm going to look at it. I'm going to suss it out for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you put photos or anything up, but you could throw that up on the screen. So, yeah. yeah. So I've gotten myself to like a really high level physique. Um, but before that, my whole goal, I've always been obsessed with money, to be honest but not obsessed, but just, I've just had a realistic view that you need money in this world. So going throughout high school, university, I always wanted to be like a businessman. And I always pictured myself being a guy in a suit, even though that sounds <laughs> pathetic. And I realized how pathetic that was at the time. I had the same thing, man. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, I just want to be a dude in a suit that makes me yeah. like a or something. <laughs> So, <laughs> fuck that <laughs> yeah. and then so when i went through like my growth and my like awakening and stuff i realized that that's like literally not what i want um but i still realized that i needed money um so i quit university one and a half years yeah one and a half years into university doing a marketing and management course i quit that to focus on making money online um which I did and I cracked the code and I've made a lot of money online. And then that was going, that was through my early stages. And then I realized that like I'd neglected my health and all this stuff and my physique looked shit. So then I was just like, all right, well, getting a good physique is the most achievable thing in the world. Cause it's so simple in its essence. All you need to do is do the correct inputs and you're going to get a good physique if you do it consistently enough. So that so then i you know went ahead and i started hitting the gym consistently started smashing you know good diet good gym routine and then i got a good physique and now i'm just um in a position now where i'm just continuing to try and strive level up in all those domains and also help other people as well on the path bro how did that make you feel when you like sort of achieved you know a goal physique that you really wanted to get yeah i mean it was pretty crazy it's like <laughs> whenever you wake up and you just look in the mirror every morning, you just like have abs, you like shredded, you know, you're in the gym. It feels good. And it feels like I've always had the thought that it was like, it was inevitable that I was going to look like that. So, I mean, it definitely feels good. And then to, for people, it also is really good because it adds value and weight behind what you say. So like, you know, someone, I, I have all these crazy thoughts and stuff, but like, it doesn't really matter because I'm jacked more, you know, more than yeah. person. so it doesn't really matter <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love that so much the the self-confidence is just <laughs> just right yeah and i mean people. some people might think that's arrogant but it's like what like it doesn't really matter like it's all just it's a, your own perception uh, yeah, as you were all, saying beforehand and if it makes you feel good and proud of yourself and like you can tell that you're really humble uh, yeah. about all of that so like of course when when you're stressed out why wouldn't your mind go well I'm Jack. Things could be worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, it's also really good because in the gym, no matter what happens in your life, like no matter what happens in any of your domains, unless you get injured, which I've been injured recently, which sucks. But no matter what happens, relationships, business, school, anything, you can always go to the gym and make progress because a lot of people fall into slumps because you fall into like a depressed state when you're not making progress, right? Because the depression is like a downhill thing. So if you're always going to be making progress in the gym, which you can be, then that's like a really good anchor point to build confidence in yourself as well. Because no matter what happens, no matter if you have a bad day at, you know, if a relationship or if business or whatever, you can always go to the gym and you know that like, all right, well, I'll just give the gym everything I have and I'll be making progress in that domain. Yes. So- yeah such a good mom like momentum builder that's what i was thinking as you were saying that like if you're progressing there obviously you can progress in other areas i have another exactly. question as well i'd love to hear like this from from your perception um speaking to some of my clients here is 
Um, so in terms of you experiencing, you know, um, cracking the code um, for online finance and stuff, but burning yourself out in the process and then getting the motivation to go, all right, I'm getting in the gym and making like something happen within myself to look after my health so I can have like really good energy and, and all the rest of it. So what, what were some of the things that got you across the line and got you into the gym consistently after experiencing that? Well, it just comes down to like, if you want it, you're going to do it. Like, if you want to get a good physique, you're going to get a good physique. If you don't want to get a good physique, then you're not going to go to the gym. Or if you don't want to get healthy or you don't want to get in shape, it's probably a better way of saying it. Um, then you're not going to do it. Like you, you need to, of course, you need to build that momentum. Like if you've never done anything before, you're going to need to build that momentum. You're, you're going to wire your brain to like find the dopamine in going to the gym and the excitement to go to the gym and then build the discipline to go to the gym. So it's going to go in that way. Like you're going to have the motivation, you're going to have the momentum, and then it's going to form into discipline where you just go to the gym and it's just a part of your lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. And what are some of the things that you do to maintain like peak health and like energy and make sure that your brain is on so that you can, you know, continually to, to create like as best as possible. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is diet. Like diet is the biggest thing. Um, and that comes down to whole foods. So like I said, I was vegan, but now literally like basically all I eat is like meat, eggs, raw milk, meat organs and potatoes <laughs> it's like basically all i eat and sometimes I, I eat like if i go out i'll just eat whatever um but that's that's the biggest thing and i think most people that go to the i think the gym is and like health is 90 percent diet like when i have my diet on point that's when i saw the most get like the most gains ever and to be on point uh, mentally and everything it comes down to your hormones so I believe that if you eat proper macros, like if you work out whatever your macros would be um, and you eat proper macros of high quality food for like two months straight or more, as long as you can do it consistently, your like hormones are going to get to the optimal hormonal level. So if you're eating like shit or you're missing macros, you're not eating enough protein or fats or carbs or whatever, your, your body doesn't have the right resources to actually optimize itself. So if you're eating everything perfectly, then you, you actually give your body what it needs to hit its like optimal hormonal level and like testosterone level. And so if you think about most people that go to the gym or whatever, and you know, you see people in the gym that are there all the time and they don't look like they're making progress. It's probably because they're not eating enough food or they're not eating enough right food or they're not doing it enough consistently I think that's the biggest thing that most people, I literally think if you're not training like a pussy in the gym, then it's 90% diet. Yeah. I couldn't agree anymore, man. I think that's like awesome. Another question. What do you think like to you, what does like masculinity mean to you? Yeah. So interesting. So I thought, so I had a conversation with someone recently, I think so masculinity back in the day was like, like you know, a warrior, an adventurer, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like a king. Yeah. So obviously there's like the macho, my, my, <laughs> yeah. but I think it's more than that. It's, it's like strategy and being like a male that can get stuff done. And I think in the modern time, we have very little outlets to let that sort of masculine energy manifest itself. And so I think currently in this, where we are right now, the best way to let your masculine energy manifest itself is through, you know, obviously going to the gym, being a creator and like dominating the business world. I think they're the, they're the three aspects because, you know, back in the day there was adventurers like Ty Lopez said it like back in the day, there was the Magellans, there was the adventurers. And that version of man now is an entrepreneur invest investor because you have the ability to strategize, you have the ability to create, you have the ability to like mobilize resources in a business sense. But then I think also having a creative outlet and a physical outlet is also very important. So I think that's how like the current masculine male can manifest itself in this like, day and age. Like balanced with all those things. Yeah, I think yeah. because then that, that gets all the angles and it lets you... Um, 
it lets you just be a creative masculine person of strategy and like confidence to know that you're doing things and you're getting stuff done in like every aspect that you're in. So if someone was listening at the moment and they're like, yeah, cool. So like I do business stuff. Uh, I go to the gym, but man, I don't create like, <laughs> what could I yeah. do to create? And they sort of come to you and like, Hey man, how can I be a creator and start creating? What advice would you give them? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I've always been like a sort of creative person. So I was always into art and painting and stuff, but now the outlet, I mean, that sort of died down a bit when I was going through my big, you know, entrepreneurial business stage. But now I found, you know, instead of painting, like I have a painting I'm looking at right now on my wall that I'm only looking at, I can, I create my edits, which create like way more emotion and drive and power, power and inspiration within people. Um, but I mean, creative doesn't, like creating stuff doesn't have to technically be like, you know, artistic. It could be, um, you know, in a business sense of just strategizing and having a creative mind because having a creative mind allows you to think outside of the box and, um, you know, get ahead of where you're currently at. Like some of the most powerful emperors and, you know, Sun Tzu and all these people, they would have had such a, like a creative mind to think about things differently to obviously beat their opponents. But in this day and age, it's to sort of beat your competition or um, grow your business or, or, you know, whatever, whatever sort of domain you're in. Mm. So besides going to the gym, <laughs> I'm like full, just shooting so many questions at you. No, yeah, just, <laughs> if you're ready. I was like, what do you think is like, besides going to the gym? Cause obviously we've, just, we've discussed that is what do you think is some of the best ways for someone to invest in themselves? invest yeah so um i was always obsessed with youtube so i would like i don't know about right now but when i was like maybe two years ago i swear i'd watched every single youtube video ever <laughs> about anything like i was just like you want to you have to be obsessed with like self-development you have to be obsessed with knowledge because if you think about like the version of me now i think of things in like timelines so there's a version of you whoever's listening now that had been in, that's been in the gym for five years already. And that version of you would be sitting, listening to this podcast already where you want to be, or maybe you haven't been hitting the gym. So there's a version of me out there that never even consumed content. And I'm just a completely different person. So the best way you can invest in yourself is by just gaining as much knowledge as you can in like every sort of sphere that you can. So number one step is YouTube. Um, I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people in real life that barely even watch YouTube and I just can't even fathom that. Like there is so, <laughs> there is so many resources on YouTube for anything. Like, like you can just binge watch YouTube and gain so much knowledge and every little piece of knowledge you have is just another little point of reference in your head to then draw upon when you want to do something or when you're, you know, living your life. So that's the biggest thing is just gaining as much knowledge as you can. Um, Cause ultimately knowledge is basically what, who, what makes you who you are. Like having the knowledge to, some people don't even know the knowledge about what a macro or a fat, like what macros are like fats, carbs, and protein. Some people don't even know what that is. So if you're listening to this right now, realize that there's people out there that don't even know that. So imagine what else there is that you're not sure about that you could learn that could benefit you yeah dude it's crazy yeah. crazy youtube is such a hack like i remember as well when you are like really thirsty for knowledge i remember listening to like 10 hour lectures on like two speed yeah the quality is so bad but you're just getting all of this amazing things just plugged into your brain and and then like having that as an access to it is just so powerful but i remember even when i was like i was like 12 years old or 13 years old, learned how to do a backflip. So I was like, how'd you learn? I was like, oh, I just learned on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. you could learn so much stuff. Everything that I consider going into, I learn on YouTube first. And then when I actually want to start getting into something, then I'll actually invest money into like a course or a program or a coach or something. And that's also really powerful as well. Realizing like I've spent so much money on, you know, entrepreneur stuff, health stuff, investment stuff just everything. Cause I realized that the more money I invest in myself, like I'm sharpening the ax, like I'm sharpening my mind. And like just yesterday, I just spent 10 grand on like something. 
And I realized that like, yeah, 10 grand is a lot of money to some people. And it is a lot of money that I could have done with whatever with, but having an abundance mindset to realize that, all right, well, if I've just invested that in myself, I'm now going to be on a higher level than the version of me that didn't do that. And that higher level version of me is going to be able to go out and attack the world and, you know, create way more abundance than the version of me that didn't do that. Have you got any good breakthrough stories of like that actually happening and coming to fruition? Of like monetarily or? Oh, it's just sort of like, um, you know, self, just the whole self-investment self. thing. Like for you, something. Yeah. So self-investment. Yeah. So I invested in an online coach mm-hmm. and um, I basically knew exactly what I needed to do in the gym anyway, but I invested in this guy and he basically just gave me macros every day. So I thought of it like a video game. So I just have all the correct inputs. If I just do all the correct inputs, I'm going to get to where I want to be. And that's what happened. Right. And a really good quote, and this could help some of your clients and stuff is a really good like thing. He said to me, I was like, dude, how am I going to eat 250 grams of like 220 grams of protein or something? I was like, that's like three steaks or whatever. (laughs) And he's like, he said, stop focusing on the small rocks and just stop focusing on the small things and just do it. And so I was like, all right, well, instead of me just like trying to grapple around how I'm going to do that, I should just go ahead and do it. Like if you know what needs to be done, you just do it. If you're just overcomplicating it, thinking like, oh, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do this? And you actually just do it, then that's all that matters. So that that was like really powerful to me, even though it was so simple. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm excited to see that, um, that uh, body transformation of yours as well. I also think... Um, uh, for you, I'd like just attach like circle moment back to some of the um, spiritual stuff because I know that like your wisdom has grown so like intense in there. And we've talked about a few things and we've generalized on stuff, but is there any sort of spiritual wisdom or spiritual stories that you really like that you'll either go back to or think about that really, you know, help motivate you? Help motivate me? Um... Yeah. Some, even if you can think of something that's maybe like a little bit, oh, this is going down down the Ooh. rabbit hole a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, I recommend everyone go learn about like the hermetic principles. Um, and what are they, by the way? Yeah. So I don't know them off the top of my head, even though okay. I probably should, but I will look them up. <laughs> that's all right. You look them up when you can. So the, that's like the, the beauty of the internet. Of, so, yeah, the biggest thing is um, law of cause and effect, mm-hmm. right? That's the biggest one. Um, Law and co- laws of law of cause and effect. So basically every single thing that you're doing, whether it's physical actions, whether it's even thoughts is going to have an effect, whether it's an immediate effect or whether it's an effect in five years, every single thing that you do is going to have an effect. So if you're, you know, oh, I'm going to go down to the pub and drink with my mates, that's going to have a flow and effect that you might not even see until like five years from now. Right. Diving into sort of, spiritual wisdom or whatever it's going to all have an effect going to the gym it's going to have an effect drinking that coke is going to have an effect or eating that steak is going to it's all going to have an effect so realizing that that's a natural law and that you can use that to basically manipulate your life and get wherever you want to be because it's as simple as just doing the actions that are going to have the outcomes that you want um you've got mentalism so that's all is in the mind the universe is mental so that comes down to literally every single thing. And that's comes down to perception as well. Every single thing is from within the mind. So the laptop we're talking on, the microphone there, that salt lamp, this Tibetan singing bowl there, every single thing was in someone's mind before it was created. So realizing how powerful your mind is and how if you hone your mind to a point that it, it is your most powerful tool, it's the most powerful resource you have. Um, you've got the law of rhythm, the principle of rhythm. So that's, these are just the main ones. And I think obviously all of them are, but rhythm is realizing that you're going to have ups and downs and you just need to flow with it. So learning to flow with the universe, I think is very spiritual in a sense. Like if you've done psychedelics or something and you, you, you might have done them with someone that went into a quote unquote bad trip, it's because they weren't, they didn't know how to flow with it. So having a trip is very similar to life, right? If you don't know how to flow with it, then you're going to go into a bad trip and you're going to sort of freak out and have these anxiety patterns. 
Whereas you need to learn how to flow with it. And it's the same with the gym and life. You, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have realizing that you're on a downswing. You know, you can realize that and you can be like, all right, well, I'm not feeling the best. I'm not, you know, overall, I'm just not having a good time, but that's all right because it's a rhythm. And obviously I'm right now, my low is higher than my previous lows, but just realizing that there's always going to be low, like, like lows and highs and you just flow with it. Um, that's really powerful, especially if you're in a downswing to just realize that that's like normal and it's not always just uphill. And it's temporary. Yeah. And it, it, it's, and it's just, everything has rhythms. Like, so that, that's, I think, or that's, I think they're the motivating factors yeah, that dude. like spirituality can, can help with. Yeah. I love those so much. So for anyone who is listening, who hasn't seen your stuff, where can they best go and, consume all of epoch rising's goodies yeah so i'm basically just all on instagram so epoch.rising is my instagram um and you can go on there i post yeah i I post on there and also i do a lot of my stuff on my stories pretty much i just post like thoughts motivational stuff um all on my stories so that's where you guys can find me awesome man well thank you so much for coming on to the show sweet yeah thanks for having me i hope i provided some value to everyone (laughs) Absolutely, bro. And if you didn't, you provided plenty of me. So <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for